Hello and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel and today we're joined by this magnificently white Volkswagen Polo. Now this is the new version and we're going to be talking about what those changes are but also checking out the Polo as a whole as it is a very popular car here in Ireland and I definitely think this new one looks really really good and a lot bigger than the old Polo might have once been. Now if you'd like to search for Volkswagen's for sale in Ireland you can hit the link up there. We've got over 1,000 trusted dealerships nationwide. Now let's get into the review. I really quite like what Volkswagen have done with the new Polo. They've made it pretty easy for the buyer. There's no electric motors, there's no range, there's no charging times. It's just a good old fashioned one litre, three cylinder petrol engine. You can get it in a manual or an automatic. But we're talking a little bit more about that. In terms of trim levels and spec, again that varies and it depends how much you really want to spend so the base model which is the life that starts at just under 23,000 euros then there's the ore line that's just under 25,000 euros and that's what we have here personally i think that's potentially one of the nicest ones to get but there is also the style now style starts at around 26,000 euros and again it's just different specs different looks i think the ore line's a little bit sportier you see that throughout the volkswagen range but yeah let me know what would you go for if you were specking up a Polo. So to begin with, let's talk about the design. So this being the ore line, it's a little bit more sporty throughout. And the key kind of components to that are, you'll see that under here, there's almost a black trim. It looks a little bit like an aftermarket splitter and it definitely does make it a little bit more aggressive. Obviously you've got the ore badge here and I have seen internationally that you can get the LED daylight going across there. This doesn't have it unfortunately, but that would look quite cool. Then around the side you have a set of wheels all the way from Spain. They're 16 inch Valencia alloys. They look really, really well. And then around the rear, this is where it really kind of comes into its own. So to begin with, in the ore line you get this lovely black spoiler. Then you also have the new Polo logo is here now underneath the badge, just like it is in the Golf. Big, big noticeable change between this and let's say the life is these chrome surrounds that are not actually surrounding anything because the exhaust is underneath. It does look very well from the rear and actually these rear tail lights, they're something new for 2022. And believe it or not, I think they look massively like a Golf. In fact, the whole car is similarly enough size to what a Golf would have been in maybe 2010 or even a little bit before then. And it's really similar to drive. It feels very, very spacious. Anyway, let's check out the inside. In here, is where it goes away from feeling like a traditional polo and really into golf territory. In fact, it's one better than a golf. It has a sunglasses holder. I don't think you get that in the Mark 8 Golf. Then the rest of the fit and finish. So this steering wheel is lovely. It's the Orline one, so you have the little logo there, but it does feel very well. And then the infotainment system. So that is a six inch as standard. This being the upgraded Orline comes with an eight inch screen. Apple CarPlay. And my phone's not even connected by a wire. I love that. And again, the system being a Volkswagen, it is really, really easy to use. And I do like that the climate control down here is separate, unlike in the new set, Leon, for example. Then over here, you have a digital driver's display. Again, if I turn that on, you can flick through a few different settings to have whatever you want displayed in front of you. The whole setup in here, it's very Volkswagen, which is a great, great thing. Then in terms of seats, so these are the ore line seats and they're supposed to be a little bit more comfortable. Truth be told, I think they're a little bit kind of hard. They're not as soft as maybe some of the competitors like the Ford Fiesta. Down here, two drink holders. Now they're not massive, but you can fit bigger drinks in the door bins. There's one thing I want to talk about, which is so random. There's a cigarette lighter. You just don't see that in a car anymore. You often get a 12 volt socket, but never a cigarette lighter. And if you don't know what that is, if you're a little bit younger, basically push this down and after about maybe five seconds, it will pop back up with a red hot, I guess, piece of metal that will light your cigarette. It'll do it now. So as you can see, that is really hot. Um, I feel like that was maybe an oversight that Volkswagen forgot to take it out. I have no idea what their idea is there. Also two USB-C charging points down here. So as a whole, it's really nice. It's a little bit dark of a cabin. You can spec 
a panoramic sunroof that costs about a thousand euros. Could be worth doing that, but as a whole, it's a fairly nice interior in this segment of the market. On the rear, you definitely begin to get a sense that here it is a polo and not a golf. And I wonder, have they compromised rear space to kind of improve it for front passengers? I'm not too sure, but it is relatively tight. And again, it's quite limited in terms of features. There's a little bit of storage in there and two USB-C charging points, which is great for the kids. And in fact, if you've got three young kids, you'll be okay in the polo because there's two ice fix points back here on both seats and also here in the front seat. So three kids and baby seats can travel in this car, which is quite nice. But I was gonna say, let's go check out the boot, but I'm gonna have to be let out because the child lock's on. In terms of boot space, do you know what? VW has been very, very sound in this apartment. 351 liters, which is only about 30 liters smaller than a Volkswagen Golf. So really, really generous. And actually they go one step further because under here, there's a full size spare wheel. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why aren't we seeing this anymore in a lot of cars? Because really nowadays you're just getting puncture repair kits. And it's to do with CO2 emissions. So adding that in adds weight, which makes it less efficient. So a lot of companies will leave that out, but I love to see it. Other features is really just some tie down points. And then of course the seats do fold in a 60-40 split. Anyway, it is time to go for a drive. Right, so to drive, well, to begin with, there's hill start assist. So currently I'm on quite a steep hill. And when I take my foot off the brake, it doesn't roll back as I take off, which is quite nice. And there is an old fashioned handbrake, which I'm sure your kids will be delighted to hear. Um, but then as you get it out onto the road, again, you do get a little bit of a sense that it's somewhat golf-like. It's quite a big cabin and it's very solid on the road. Obviously this one is the oar lines. The seats are a little bit lower, I think. It's definitely how they feel. And also the suspension, I suspect could be dropped a little bit. But yeah, as a whole on the road, it is brilliant. Now, engines is a really important one to discuss because Volkswagen have made this very easy for you. They've taken the Henry Ford approach and they said, in Ireland, you can have a one liter TSI engine and that is it. It's 95 brake horsepower. It is available with a five speed manual or also a seven speed DSG. I suspect the DSG would actually be more efficient because it would sit on lower revs. In fact, today I was on the motorway at 120 kilometers per hour and we're sitting close to kind of 3K, which is a little bit screechy, but that said, the engine's fairly refined. Speaking of the motorway, Adaptive cruise control works really, really well. It also has lane departure warning, or it essentially keeps you in your lane, which is really, really nice too. Other driving aids has a really good reversing camera. I quite like how that pops up on the Volkswagen badge. Now in terms of power, because I think a lot of people get scared about a one liter engine, and truth be told, I would have been before I started reviewing cars thinking the same thing. Because back in the day, a one liter Polo would have been very sluggish and almost dangerously slow. But because of the way they've done it with the turbo and the way it comes on, it packs a little bit of a punch. And it is very, very nippy and it definitely has enough power. I don't think it needs 120 or 130 horsepower. Around 100 is more or less enough. So there you have it, that is the updated Volkswagen Polo. And actually one thing I do really like is that they've kept the old key. These were one of the best keys ever made. Now, that's our review of the new Polo and I have to say it's so, so good. I like that they've made it simple in terms of the engine options and of course the gearboxes. Now the big question is, do you buy a Polo or do you consider getting an Ibiza or maybe a Ford Fiesta or do you go Korean or Japanese? That's up to you and my advice is always go down to your local dealership, test drive a few different cars and see what suits you the most and then actually make an educated decision. And if we can help you in any way, please be sure to reach out in the comments and we'll do our best. Now, in terms of the Polo itself, which one do you go for? Well, again, that's up to you. But personally, I think the Orline is a really good option. It's only about 2,000 euros more expensive. And for that, you're getting a lot because the entry level doesn't come with floor mats and it doesn't even come with cruise control, which is somewhat limited. Now, if you've enjoyed this review, please make sure to leave a comment below and give us a thumbs up. 
and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.